Hello everybody, I'm the here for the Hammer Game Channel. Welcome back to Kaiser Redux and to a new playthrough in the good old US of A. Um, right, we'll get to that in a second. We currently have the Pacific Congress in charge. Fantastic, a building. Um, as you can see, I've kind of played to 1936. Um, well, obviously. Um, November 1936, the election has happened and ended in a deadlock, so that's why everyone's breaking away. But anyways, our first event. Anti-war sentiment ferments within the officer corps. As the once righteous United States of America splinters and collapses and verges ever closer to total civil war, many within our isolated oasis of Republican ideals here on the Pacific coast have begun to voice their growing desire to avoid war with their fellow Americans. Fearing the chaos, bloodshed and savagery of a brother war here on our own continent, these peacemongers have grown increasingly vocal in their aversion to the seemingly inevitable war that's growing on the horizon. Normally such a development would not even grab the state's attention, but recently these anti-war sentiments have begun to seep into our own officer corps, infecting the minds of some of our military staff and leaders with cowardice and hesitation. We likely do not have to act on this, for some aversion to war, especially a civil war, is normal for a nation that was once as close-knit as our dying union. However, some of our more hawkish or paranoid cabinet members have called on our regime to crush these calls for peace before they grow out of hand. How shall we proceed? Well, since we're back with a good old Walt Disney playthrough, apologies it's taken me so long to get back to this, um, I wanted to get back into this for ages, um, Disney gets shot. Oh, that's Hughes. Uh, pick the increased successionism. So, the successionism cause will grow. Perfect. Social socialist militancy. The militant wing of the IWW, the Red Guard, and other anarchist and socialist militants have grown in recent weeks. Ah, oh, minor socialist resistance. Perfect. Reach out to Long. While many in our republic are no fans of Hugh Long, he is basically the least radical of the governments that have formed. At least pays lip service to restoring the constitution. Should we try to reach out to achieve a truce in the face of our current enemy in the Western Command Centre? Of course, it is likely to be met with strong opposition from those who feel strongly against the man, and he's just another radical that needs to be stopped, and offering could cause a handful to not serve and parts of the Congress to get an uproar. Do it. Long's demands. Long has received their offer and has agreed to, a const to be constrained by the Constitution, where he has demanded that a national election be held as soon as the region is united, Desires benefits for the share of the wealth society with our territory and has called on the PSA leadership and announced that Long is doing all he can to save American democracy and to allow recruitment within their territory. Seems even time of war, the Kingfish still has potential manoeuvring on the mind. I will accept, Long. I will accept. We were designed to allow these pacifists and cowards to continue their protests and fear monger. The idea of succession has begun to grow within the minds of the general populace. Worrying still, these sentiments have begun to reach and influence the big business sector of the Pacific economy, sending conglomerates with holdings in our states from Standard Oil and Ford Motor Company to more local operations like the California Railroad Commission, have begun to display and prolifer proliferate these dangerous ideas as well. These companies, though many would be able to find at least some profit in the coming war, would stand to lose far more of their home markets, customer bases and infrastructures are devastated in horrific civil conflict. As if all this was not worrying enough, there have been reports of General Henry Arrow being seen communicating with these with known associates of these peacemongers. Though what about though what, what though about what we are still ignor ignorant to? Many within our cabinet are now cor uh, crying for us to do something this rising tide of pacifist ideals. Though doing so would be a violation of our very founding principles. If we're going to be the heirs to American republicanism, we must abide by its rules and rights too. It's our nation's principle to let businesses and leaders hold their own beliefs. That is very true. So we've got peace with Long, which is good. Uh, do, 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 do. Henry. Peacemongers take matters into their own hands. Despite the warnings and writings on the wall, our regime was blinded by the spectre of looming war, and for it we have paid the ultimate price. Like wildfire, the dangerous notions of peace have spread to infest much of the nation as our people recoil from the idea of spilling innocent American blood on our own hollowed soil. As we speak, General Henry Arnold and his forces have moved into the capital, surrounding and disarming the National Guard outside the capital building without ever firing a shot. With bloodless coup uh, ordained by the people, General Arnold will assume the role as temporary leader of the Pacific States, where he searches for a candidate to fill the position of interim president. 
while also reaching out to the government in Washington, General MacArthur, National Deal of Peace, mutually assured assistance and reconciliation as a people here brought a unique and finally independent Pacific identity. To save a million sons. Hello, Henry Arnold. Welcome, 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 sir. So that is step one complete. The Northern Restoration, obviously, is one of the choices there. We have the Pacific Prosperity, which John F. also joins, and we can basically align ourselves with Japan. We have Howard Hughes, and obviously Walt Disney. And obviously, we know exactly who we're going with. It's only been a short few days since General Arnold led his march on Sacramento. While our government is still far from stable, the time has come to make a decision regarding our very future. When Arnold forced the previous provisional government to step down, he did so in the name of the so-called Peacemonger Movement, a movement calling not just for us to not enter the coming civil war, but one calling for the creation of a secessionist Republican on the West Coast. Now in power, movement, the movement has run headfirst into a brick wall on our, of our current realities, and has split into two camps as a result. The first and largest camp, dubbed the Realists, wish for his th uh, connections with our forces to cut a deal with the Federalists, as they would be one in which the Pacific forces would fight for MacArthur's, uh, MacArthurites in exchange to, of, for recognition of Pacific sovereignty over the West Coast. We will say this is one way we can truly ensure a bright future for our children, or so they claim. The second camp to emerge on the succession question uh, as it is to be dubbed, are known as the Dreamers. The Dreamers mostly made up of junior officers and students, golfers that totally abandon America. With others reject any deal or offer from the warring factions, and instead work to build up the Pacific and Dream, free from any conflict whatsoever. Unlike the Realists, they have no contingency should the victor of the coming conflict demand our reincorporation, save for extensive militarization of Pacific states. With MacArthur's deadline coming ever close, no time to debate exists. Uh, General Arnold would now make a decision. Yes, we're going to help MacArthur. Well, we'll try anyways. Ugh, organized clan resistance. I'm sorry, how would the clan be out over here? Baseball season cancelled. A new Pacific Republic. The sun shone brightly as General Henry Arnold gave a spe victory speech to a crowd of thousands outside the Capitol building of Sacramento. The old honor general exclaimed, of our many triumphs and virtues, recalling, regaling the crowd with enticing words of inspiration and true patriotism. There are some back home who ask me, but who are we protecting? What are the Pacific states to us? Sometimes we forget that the light of our society shines beyond our borders. Sometimes we take those privileges for granted that our forebears fought so hard to achieve. We must always remember that wherever Pacificans stand, we carry our principles with us. Equal respect, representation, and protection of the laws of just a republic. This was the same fire that burned in the heart of the old Union that preceded us. We are the heirs of that civilization, torchbearers eastward of the Pacific, into the darkness of this wasted land. When America fell, we held our own. When America fell, we carried the weight. When America fell, we drew a line through the Mojave, as clear as the Colorado River. A line that the American Caesar now cannot cross. Today we stand here as brothers and sisters to hold that line. Today we honour all the Pacificans by carrying the weight. Today we are the waves of the Pacific, pushing ever eastward. We are the, whatever that is, rising from the Sierra Nevadas, defiant and enduring. We are the great western light of the Pacific stage, torched bearers in the darkness, living reminders of all that is best in the Republic. Thank you all, thank you. His speech ended with tremendous, thunderous, sorry, applause and deafening cheers. The sons of a truly free Pacific people, crying out for their national father. A rebirth Republic has been baptised in flame and blood, and now we stand res resolute with our independence and our values. And the values of the Founding Father is intact. We now stride forward into an uncertain and ever darkening future. And today, with the conclusion of the general speech, we shall fly high in the banner of our new republic to fully rally the people of these United Pacific States to rally around the, per the perpetuity. Under this banner, and behind the guiding torch of our vindicated ideals and traditions, our new Pacific Republic shall meet its de de destiny, whatever it may be, head on and fully united. Um, does it does it matter what we call ourselves? I hope we've not balls this up. Have Disney elected? Okay, we've. I don't think this really matters. We raise a new design, one cleansed and separated from the violence of our nation's birth. Ah, beautiful, Sandy. 
Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I think we're gonna go, you pal. Hmm. What's a looming? What's what's? All oh, right. Yeah. That. That's fine. Eh. Uh, no. I. Who did I choose? Did I choose Howard Hughes? Yes, I did. That's fine. Ah, right, cool. Um, I actually forgot to point out some things that actually have went on. Um, in the rest of the world, just due to like people, like who's taking over certain countries and what's going on where. I'll just quickly get this sorted so we can get those divisions sorted out. Uh, Charles Lockwood, yes. Um, so France has Benoit. Nicholas is there in the U.S. Britain. Kornilov is here in the Russian Republic. Kolchak's still alive right now. I think that's everything, actually. Yeah, Mussolini's here as well. Who doesn't love a cheeky wee bit of Mussolini action? And then, of course... Ah, this civil war has begun. Canada moves into New England. Yeah, we'll deal with that later. The government of Washington, led by General MacArthur, has agreed... Oh, what? To our pleas of peace and cooperation, the ever worsening atmosphere of chaos that has surrounded the American continent, now we shall take on the radicals that have beset the burning American Union together with the Federalists as they seek to build their own unique and independent Pacifican identity. As such, any deal or ceasefire agreement with other factions has been cast aside as we throw our lot in with the Federalists. General Arrow has now begun the process of transition back to the civilian government as he and his forces prepare to fight for the right to be free and independent on the beautiful coast. Okay. This is interesting. So we ca we're fighting with the command. Okay. Let's 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 get into bloody Huey. Let's get into the Long Dong. Um. Oh yes, brilliant. Absolute tactics, man. Tactics. Go with Disney. Go with Disney. That's what we're doing. With the nation now, by and large, at peace. The time has come. I'm sorry, a piece. A uh, honor the step down and appoint a provisional government due to the most mainstream parties, such as the Democrats, Republicans, and Progressives. Being from intervention and American reclamation, they've been banned. It's been the case only a few cans are open to leaders to our pacification. Cartoonist, representative, and entrepreneur Walt Disney and his vice president Howard Hughes from the National Visionary Party, a party formed only a short few days ago, is one such choice. While both are household names, Disney has no political track record and can do more harm than good. We do not give a crap. Go with Disney. Where is he? Hello, Walt. How are you doing? We've got been given observer rights. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, so... That's always false for the time being. So, Dwight's his mass assault... You're the Grand Brattle Plan. McNair. Brigadier General Leslie James McNair has given us a detailed strategy report. He argues that we must use massive artillery air support to help our infantry prevail over more numerous enemies. That sounds like a fantastic plan. We call the China Marines. The Marines in China return to America. Okay. They're veterans. Oh my days. Um, can I just... And assign you guys for one second. Commando, Commando Duck versus a clan. Japanese ambassador becomes High Commissioner in Shanghai. Okay. A new Disney production once again does what should have been done long ago and presents an amusing animated short for children to enjoy and the expansion of the Constitutional Republic of America. It starts with Donald Duck humorously power dropping into northern Florida, narrowly escaping being eaten by alligators, then goes on to dodge clan snipers, drawing as clear stereotypes as others, before accidentally destroying an enemy naval base. Kids get it for free. Hell yeah. Prone to venture riots. Well, the decision to declare Pacific independence was always going to be unpopular. Few could have expected the degree to which the popularity would come out. Spontaneous protests spurred on by both the banning of nearly all major political parties and the decision to appoint such a political unknown as Disney Leader Pacific 
have taken place nationwide. While peaceful first, the protests quickly turned to the riots when pro-secessionist crowds emerged to come to protest. Already the National Guards of California and Washington remobilized in key cities to try and restore order. To mitigate further violence, President Disney has taken to address the nation via radio. It is a difficult choice to make. In his speech, he must decide whether to support the secessionists and keep the dream of an independent Pacific alive, or break them and work to reclaim America. No. No. We are not. We do not care about America. We are creating our own destiny. <gasps> what? After this made the decision to remain a secession nation, the already dangerous riots have grown to be controllable size, despite the National Guard's best attempts. Major cities such as Portland, Seattle, and San Francisco have fallen into what could only be called miniature civil wars. Even Sacramento was the scene of a bloody massacre as rioters faced off against several units of the National Guard. Although so far, Sacramento has remained mostly within government hands. The nation further defend descends into chaos. President Disney has taken to make another address, this time in person, the attempt to restore stability and unity. Many of Disney's own security detail warn him against such an action, as there will no doubt be an attempt to snuff him out. Disney, of course, is having none of it. Disney's speech was a modest thing, and very few bother to listen as he wraps up his speech. There's a ruffling in the small crowd as a young man approaches Disney's podium. The young man produces a handgun and fires in the air, sparking a riot. He is, he is not killing Disney. You do not get that. Failure of Walt Disney to restore its ability to the Pacific States has led to the collapse of social order across the nation. Protestants' rights are growing into rebellions as the succession question tears families apart, makes neighbours take up arms against each other. The nation on the verge of complete collapse it appears the military is preparing to deal things, uh, deal things themselves. Officers loyal to Walt Disney are reporting that the army is once more preparing to place General Arnold under the presidential seat in hopes he can bring order when Walt Disney has failed. These reports also mention how this plot is still in its infancy, suggesting that if the president could rally the armed forces, they could still restore order. After much deliberation, Walt Disney decides to rally the army. He is not going anywhere. The nation is in flames, the army is in shambles, something must be done, yet nobody is doing anything. These urges echo through the James Pacific Congress as Walt Disney addressed the assembly. As the speech went on, Disney's words became more sinister as he began to blame Congress for the nation's ills. In the end of his speech, his words became darker yet as he denounced democracy, denounced socialism, denounced the very people he was addressing by name. In the end of the speech, he read, Our nation must achieve true prosperity. However, one thing prevented our nation from achieving prosperity democracy. As the speech ended, members of the military stormed the halls and arrested every member of Congress. The military police took them to the unknown location as loyal foot soldiers crushed the riots in every city with brutal force. Um, Disney? This isn't TNO. I think you need to calm down a little bit, mate. That is a pretty sinister picture there. Benevolence and progress. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> the Atomic Age. Mm -mm -mm. Cool Leo's, eh? Canada supports the federal government. That's fine. Why are we getting outraged by that? We, we, we've got a good relationship here with MacArthur. I don't know. I don't know why we're getting, we're not happy with that. That that is perfectly fine. What the hell are we researching this garbage for? Yeah, let me just research flipping sonar stuff. What? We're not building a navy right now. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear, man. Right? Can we? Can we? Can we please get to the line? Thank you. Taking a sweet ass tap. Marines. Right. How are we doing for guns? And the negative. Azerbaijan has joined the Caucasian, Caucasian Defense League. Panama's joined the Entente. Who is it? Okay. Okay, Stalin. You look like you're gonna have a good old fun time there. I'm um, not going to bother doing Disney little part of the tree right now. I think we need to work on... Wow, 50 units of infantry equipment. Fantastic. I'll be honest with you, I hadn't really planned on just abandoning our claims to the US, but I think it would make for an interesting playthrough, just play playing as the Pacific States. Plus, we could always betray MacArthur, I guess.
Hello, Hirohito. Oh, you're the man. Bring me those Arasakas. I shall put them to great use. My diversions are guff. <laughs> oh, that's, that's one thing that's going to be a problem. Cancel lend lease. You got me in the deposit of Japan, so I'm very, very happy with that. Thank you. It is greatly appreciated. Kingdom of Finland has joined the Reichspact. Toad Artillery. The Kazi Arms, or Kazi, Kazi Arms factories. And let's go ahead and... Yep, deal with the Red Guards. Eh, I think we just kind of need to bite our time. And um, we do have one whole infantry division. Well, wow, and bloody tastic. Um, of course, we do need a lot more of them. We can get up to 68 divisions, which is good. Support from the resistance. Perfect. Russia has announced her ambitions. Um, let's, can I... I'm going to do it. I'm going to do that. It's not too bad of a deficit, plus it just means we've got better divisions across the board. Um, George Aitken. Captain of Industry. Ooh, laddie la. Let's root up the clan. And we'll help Omar Bradley hold on to this. Bradley Eisenhower strategy. Hmm. Okay, the combined arms. Oh, artillery attack and defense goes down. Oh, we just lose it. That's fine. That is fine by me. But do I want to start going down Disney's tree? Well, Disney has taken charge of our nation. His plan is to bring the Pacific States into the future. While well, little think he can truly make good on that promise, President Disney assures us that his plan will involve massive projects, including power plants, massive infrastructure projects, theme parks, and public transport. As well, Disney's own background as a cartoonist will help bring entertainment to a broken America, as well as influence a great deal of the population. Yes, let him do his thing. Break the executive's chains. It's a dangerous path to lead, especially if your leader is less than stable. Oh no, 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 what the f- We need a strong executive for our nation, a strong figure to lead our nation forward, a visionary that cares not for the petty bounds of- bonds of cash- cap- uh, constitutionalism, not the rule of law made by senseless bureaucrats. This is a dangerous path, but I feel like it's a path that Walt Disney would indeed take. Peru and Bolivia have unified for everybody's entertainment. I think we can actually- can we actually mount an offensive? Ooh, actually, maybe not- maybe not just like that. Let's not just do that. Sensible then. Baby steps, baby steps. If we can cut them in two, I'll be happy with that. Um, having the command. Yeah, we've got a good- we've got a good wee batch of guys here. That's- that's the good thing. Usually the command centre gets flipping destroyed, but we're gonna be helping out our pals. The influence of the present will grow. The Red Scare, goodbye, the social democracy. Manpower 5,000, everyone's state 2 infrastructure. Mm. Every own state 2 civilian factories. Ooh, that could be pretty good. Very useful indeed. Which way do I get to go in this? Any way I want. Fantastic. That's what I like to see. Let's do combined arms units. Oh, McNair, what are you doing, you pleb? Getting sick like that. Unbelievable. See if we can actually encircle them, potentially. Um, obviously, we're not going to be gaining any more divisions, sadly, but that is the choice we have made. Both of them are L, for Pete's sake. What are you just playing at? One job. One job, and I can't even trust you to do that. Right, yeah, those guys are just pinning them in. Pin them in. Pin them in. The rise of the vote. Kornilov's gone. Sandvinkov in. 
We will be saying hi to Savinkov also today. That'll be the other episode for today, guys. Walt Disney first, then Savinkov. Happy days. I was going to say, we have left a gap there, but... Hawaii has joined the Co-Prosperity Sphere. I hope we can actually join the Co-Prosperity Sphere. That would be... Is that still an option for us? Say goodbye to your division, Shui. Eh... Onwards. Onwards to victory. How are we doing for equipment? Just a little bit short of artillery. That's fine. Making making good little bits of progress here. Hopefully we can end the civil war quicker than we did in um, our playthrough with Peli. I think that kind of went on just for a little bit too long in my opinion. What I can always do is, I think I can trust the command centre to hold the south. If we just focus on possibly just concentrating our forces ever so slightly and just kind of doing a a decent push down there, potentially is a pretty useful and effective idea, potentially. Just because we do have a lot of terrible militia divisions still plaguing our ranks. Constitution American Republic has declared war. Okay, I... I'm shocked it took you that long to declare war. Are we at war with them? Yeah, we are. Walt Disney and MacArthur. That's like the best dream team you could bloody ask for. Um, it's... Yeah, look at us. We're, we're on the same side here. We're on the same side. Happy days. Happy days. Let's just hope we don't get betrayed. Support from the resistance. Happy days, we have plenty of guns. It's not really guns we're lacking though, it's preventing us from changing really. Drop, let's change. Motorize, I'm going to change you as well. Bend some of this utter garbage. Ecuador's getting evaded, or yes, it was Ecuador. Um, I think we'll concentrate ourselves even more. We'll, st we'll make sure that we're still in uh, Denver. So we're a little bit of artillery short, but I, I really don't see that impacting us at all, really. Um, nope, I think we can even go push the longest front. See if we can potentially maybe grab some encirclements along the way. Um don't think Huey's going to be having the best of times here. I think we might. I think us helping the command centre has really screwed Huey over. War in... well, the bush war. Mm, potentially got an encirclement occurring there. Oh, if I was a little bit more in the ball there, I would have... Notice that. Might still potentially be able to get some divisions. See, I don't know why we got outraged by the Canadians with them supporting the Federalists. I feel like that shouldn't have happened. 11 divisions. The thing is, if we can break through there, they're screwed. So I think what we'll do is I'll just tell you guys to punch through and just try and get those divisions. Oh, damn syndicalists. We don't take too kindly to your kind here. Saying that, Disney denotes bloody everything, really, so... Prepare the artillery. Prepare the artillery. Do it. Also, get these divisions encircled. I don't care where you break them, as long... Oh, oh, ho, 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 Oh, what's that, Cindy's? What's that? What's that? Oh, your divisions are stuck. Oh, what terrible shame. Nobody's crying for you. I 
Ah, the Fort Balkan War. What a glorious occasion. Yeah, don't let them get out. That's what they're coming for. Oh. <laughs> Got 7,000 guns. Uh, do, 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 do. Yes, infantry coming stuff. That is what I like to see. Can we actually maybe swoop round? Yes, get into them. Flipping Japan divisions are doing nothing. <laughs> Oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just defend the Canadian border. Yeah, 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 that's exactly where I need you. We'll cross, apparently cross the Rockies. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think we're already past the Rockies. Support from the resistance, perfect. The resistance coming in. Game changers. Ho 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 As they say in France, a oh, wee oui, wee. Oui. Savoyard crisis has been resolved. We're just gonna do a little bit. I think what we should possibly do is just get you on that, just to see if we can just push a little bit harder. Come on, command. I need you to use the help here. Mm. Mm -mm. Good stuff. Very good stuff. I just need one of these in here. Perfect. Perfect. Only right, good Sundays are dead Sunday. That's what we've got here. Let's upgrade our artillery. Probably not the best thing to be doing in the middle of a war, but um, it will suffice. Goodbye to your divisions. Turkestan Kanate's gone. Who would have seen that coming? Definitely not any of us. Hmm. Russia could be having problems. Potentially. Uh, since everyone's joined the Riggs Pact. Um, let's go ahead and continue down here. Let's get some 5,000 manpower. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful. Perfect. Right, Mori is up here. I just want to end them. Um, I'm happy with how things are progressing. I'm very happy. Um, do you reckon we'll maybe get some more land in the peace deal? Maybe the Western Command, we might get given some land. I doubt it. Probably being a little bit too optimistic now. Fifty days for that, and there goes another batch of Cindy's. Boom. We are doing bets with our tiny, pathetic little army. A hundred ninety-one thousand killed there. A hundred and thirty thousand there, and we've lost fifty-four k. We cannot complain. The only thing is, I am just going to bring our involvement on the front a little bit downwards again. I'm trusting you quite a lot here, but you are the bigger boy, so. Uh, Syndicalist Republic of Chile has joined the Third International. And we have the Patagonian Workers Front, so we'll now have the Argentine Commune. The art of propaganda. Propaganda is more than what Americans say it is. Propaganda is very much an art, and a man like Disney should know as well. So Disney's vast entertainment empire is put to work to create patriotic shorts that display the greatness of the present Disney to everyone. Of course. 
I am very, very happy with our uh, first year of efforts, really. Um, pretty good going. I, I don't think we've done terrible at all. Um, I'd like to knock up the syndicalists. Um, that would be very, very advantageous. Um, it's just a matter of actually pushing through. But at the same time, Huey probably doesn't really care that much. Um, I will defend it in here potentially, hopefully. It's not got a lot of great divisions nearby, so. And the better we can stretch the Cindy's out, the better as well. Ah, more support from the resistance. Um, who can still be changed? Yes. So who? Oh, what division can he be changed? Let me guess. The Marines. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's all of our templates changed. To really be the best that we can possibly even get them to at this current time. Oh, Uclair? Nah, it's definitely not Uclair. I don't know how you pronounce that um, city, um, but we're taking it. I think we need to actually give our men a little bit of just a wee chill. Can we just reinforce, reinforce. Uh, what else do we have available to us? The US Navy, don't really care for the Navy or the Air Force at this time. Let's do crossing the Rocky Mountains. Which we obviously have crossed, you know. We've we've crossed it all right. Mm. Ulria has risen up against the Austrians. That is not ideal for them, but at the same time, we don't care. Maybe we'll even win. See, Japan. Japan is the boy. What? Okay, I don't know what that was for, but cool. Um, the art propaganda. Walt Disney is many things. Benevolent leader, entrepreneur, animator, visionary. The list could go on. Chief among his many talents has always been his ability to win the hearts and minds of the masses by weaving a seemingly magic tapestry of suggestion and influence capable of bending his audience to his will. Much of his ability has come from his mastery of the airwave that zip across the skies of the Pacific States and beyond, subtly um, subtly influencing the actions and thoughts of millions, smart enough to realise that all generations must be influenced. Disney's companies and state-run bureaus have begun to create new programmes that run both day and night, both on TV and on the radio, to reach larger audience numbers than ever before. For adults, news programmes... Talk shows and other adult programming have filled the main slots, all subtly influenced by the Disney's own doctrine. While the adults chew on their cud watching and listening in to our more serious content, children across the states shall feast their eyes upon the newest animated creations straight from the mind of Walt Disney himself. With these new entertainment options spreading throughout our nation and skyrocketing in popularity, Disney's power grows too with it. The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Yeah, do you know what? That's actually not terrible words of wisdom right there at all. I think that's actually pretty spot on. Got to work to be successful. And now Austria's at war with Hungary. Yep, that is a crisis on the Danube and a half. Damn. Oh, flipping heck, that's a crisis for them. Oh. Galicia Lodomeria has been invaded by Poland. So, oh, imagine if the Italians get involved. Then I, th I think it's probably safe to say the Austrians are going to be dead and Germany's going to be minus an ally. Perfect, we are just picking little holes every now and there in their lines. The house in the, in the house. The mouse is in the house. Walt Disney's newest programming, filling the frequencies of the Pacific State's radio broadcasts and television channels. 
his influence and reach of control has never been larger. Particularly owing great weight to his success and popularity has been Disney's surge in opinion and prominence in the eyes of our nation's youth. Our visionary leaders' newest animated programming, or cartoons, have been an explosive success with the children of the Pacific States, particularly due to the unexpected public obsession with a certain mouse character designed by Dizzy himself. Uh, debuting recently in his fil uh, first films such as Steamboat Willie and Playing Crazy, the one and only Mickey Mouse has become a smash hit and instant cultural icon to our people. Absolutely astonishing. Given his simple design, a large amount of success has come from the application of the newest audiovisual equipment, allowing his first animated shorts to be fully sound synchronised, much like the first talkies that inspired Disney, like the semi recently released The Jazz Singer. With these animated shorts dominating the minds of the youth, an entire generation has been secured within Disney's grasp before they even could think about rebellion. Who's the leader of the club that's made for you and me? I guess Mickey Mouse. Anyways guys, I'm going to leave that episode there, so thank you very, very much for watching. I do hope you enjoy, and I shall be back very, very soon for another episode. Until next time, take care. Cheer bye. Bye now.